Hi everyone, this is Cece and welcome back to the 12th day of the 12 days of Christmas. This is part two, so if you've missed part one, I will put an iCard in the top right hand corner so you can go and check that out by clicking on the little I in the circle. And now I'm at the part where I'm going to add two giant lights glowing from behind the girl and the bird. And for this, I make sure that I leave a white circle behind each of these um, two people slash animal. <laughs> so the bird and the girl. Uh, so I'm leaving a, a big white space. And then around this, I will add a cream color and two different uh, yellows one is a light and one is darker and I go over these circles many many times and try to blend them as much as possible and then I'm going to start adding some pinks and some magentas and purple to the background so when I do this every time I change a color I try to blend it into the other one the previous ones and I go back and forth between uh, using for instance I'm doing the pink here so I'm using the pink one and then I, I kind of do a base layer like a base coat very lightly and then I take the yellow and then I blend that in and then I take the pink and I blend that in until it kind of looks almost seamless it's impossible to do very seamless uh, rendering but as close as possible to uh, eliminating the, the the limiting line between the two of the, the, the two colors if that makes any sense so here I've slowed down this clip so that you can fully understand what I'm trying to say with my words because they're not working well <laughs> So yes, yeah, so the yellow back and forth into the pink and of course that creates a nice orange glow. And I'll be doing this throughout the whole background. So like I said, every time I change color, I do this. I go back and forth with the previous color. And um, I use small circular motions uh, for most of it anyways. If I have a large, large area to cover with the same color, Sometimes I will um, not take my time as much <laughs> just because a well it's long and I'd rather go back and forth and um, in different directions and that creates also a nice um, coloring. Of course you'll always see the uh, pencil marks and that's okay like I've said before many times I do like the texture of the pencil crayons in the background um, mind you I, I like to see the colors blend into each other but um, for here this is exactly what I was talking about I really had a large area to cover with this color and so I just scribbled very lightly and then it's a matter of just adding layers as opposed to pressing really hard on the pencil and eventually you will get something that resembles um, more of a blended look as much as it is possible to do with a pencil without the aid of a mineral spirit or a blender pencil. The other thing I did to the background is adding some kind of movement. Uh, when I was doing the pink around those two light sources, I made sure that I brought the pink right up to the edges of the paper, not in a straight line, kind of like in a wavy line going from fat to very thin towards the edge. Uh, and then I'm going to work with those shapes when I add the purples and the magentas. And this will become clearer. Here you can kind of see I'm leaving some kind of uh, lighter colors in. I'm creating pods, kind of. Um, and I think that just adds to the background as opposed to being one solid um, group of colors. I like the fact that there are certain areas that are lighter than others within the same colors and also here I've slowed it down so that you can see that once I have done uh, the girl completed the girl and I did like the first layer of the background I went back in with a black pencil and added some heavier um, shadows or sh shading shadows shading I guess on the different 
uh, parts and I waited to have the background done because that gives me more of an idea of where I want the shadows. I knew that my light sources was were coming from behind, but there's still some reflection on the girl and the bird because of that light source. And so that's why I decided to do this after I added the background. Um, and so every single area is going to get the same treatment. So I'm not going to show again the full thing because it becomes redundant. But um, the other thing I want to mention is that while I was adding the black shadow, um, I went back in with the the darkest color that was there originally to blend the black in with with the, the rest of the colors otherwise it would have been too um there would have been a break in between the black and the other color because the black is quite extreme and especially on the hair the darker color or the darkest color that i took was kind of like a mid-tone so i really did not want to have like a very harsh shadow i wanted this to be very gradual and also the strands of hair that are behind the bigger ones of course they're going to be darker because that's just the way it works For the snow, I have to admit that I was quite puzzled. Uh, because it's a night scene, I wasn't sure how to render the snow. You can't leave it white, really, because it wouldn't make sense. However, it's not as dark as the night sky, for sure, because snow usually is reflective. So I started very slowly by adding a warm gray. I also knew that I needed to have a shadow underneath the girl because the light source is behind her. A little bit for the bird, not too much. But um, I also needed to have a reflection for the light source because it's very strong so I graduated towards blues darker blues and of course the stronger shadow is underneath the girl and the last thing that I added was a little bit of yellow to the left 
uh, bottom because in my mind that only made sense and I have to agree uh, because I do get a lot of this question uh, the same question people are uh, some people are puzzled as to how to shade and whatnot of course it has to do with the light source but when you're also mixing the fact that you need to pay attention to the light source but also that you're adding shading to what we consider a reflective a matter it's kind of like water water is reflective snow as well is reflective ice a uh, piece of glass so that complicates a little bit the shadowing <laughs> part but i'm quite happy with how it turned out i also took this opportunity to correct something i didn't like the border of the dress was thicker on the left hand side as opposed to the right so when i used the last color for the shadow underneath which was my black i sort of incorporated that into the shadow so i was able to fix my mistake that way The snowflakes that are on the original line art of course disappeared because I added so much color on top of the these borders so I needed uh, to recreate them uh, for this I used the signal white gel pen and I have to say that I was quite surprised on the polychromos because they're not entirely wax based they're oil based primarily the signal uh, pen was not clogging up as much as when I use it over Prismacolor pencils and quite honestly I don't like to use them over Prismacolor I end up using the paint pen but the paint pen does not have that sharp tip that I was looking for and so I was very agreeably surprised by how well it worked uh, from time to time it became a little bit um, gunky and I just remove the uh, excess on a piece of paper that I had off to the side and that was it. The other thing I noticed too um, when I was adding the snowflakes I knew I was going to add some shading onto them because then it it wouldn't make sense. The borders are shaded quite heavily. The snowflakes are part of the border so they didn't need some shading. However the gel pen is not something that will sink into the paper at this point because there's so much build up of the colored pencils so it kind of creates this like a little bit raised um, texture and if you use a colored pencil over that it will remove the white they will scratch away so I'm going to struggle a little bit uh, you're gonna see this in a few seconds when I added the shadow at the far right of the border and then I realized that if I use the pencil almost perpendicular to the paper, um, it will help. It won't scratch uh, the snowflakes as much. So here, this is the violet and I just had to keep going. <laughs> I mean, it does make sense because it's in the dark, so they're not as visible and that's fine. Um, and then I discovered that little trick and that was a little bit more uh, easy to do. The sleeve was a good success, as you can see. I, I had a little bit of it scratching off, but not so much. 
And now I'm going to add some snow to the background. For this, I'm using the white India ink. And I'm wearing a glove because I was supposed to use a toothbrush and I decided that the line, uh, the fine liner was good. Um, so I'm using that flicking motion and I'm also adding some bigger flakes with the tip of the brush or with the brush, the actual bristle of the brush directly on the paper. Yes, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. And, and then I'm adding some diamond stickles on the hat and on a little bit on the bird, on the berries. And that's pretty much it. This is done. The 12 days are done. I hope that you've enjoyed this series. I do want to thank my awesome patrons because without them, I could honestly not do these 12 days. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. And I hope that you've enjoyed the series, the sketches or coloring pages, whatever you want to call them. They're still up for grabs and will remain there uh, for as long as Etsy is Etsy. So um, I will put the link in the description below. And it, as an iCard, this could be a fun thing to do during your Christmas vacation. Um, if you want to color with your kids or with your relatives, your friends, that could be fun. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below as usual. Thank you for watching and I will see, see you very soon. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>